I said, well, Mr. Webster, you have a, a very long uh, career in the movie industry. It spanned decades. Uh, how much do you think that uh, the world changed, that uh, this world changed in the last 10 years, and particularly uh, in, in the field of drama? Right. That um, I think my, the area I've specialized in is basically drama. You know, serious films that try to say serious things to an audience reflect society back on itself. And I think that's the area in the film industry in general that is probably most under threat. Budgets certainly have been suppressed enormously. Um, and less dramas are being made that reach audiences. A lot more films are being made but a lot less films are reaching audiences. Uh, and in, I think the big change that I've seen since, you know, I've been in the film industry 40 years, so the big change I've seen is that dra dramatic films no longer command such a powerful place in the cultural conversation in the world. There's too much competition, there's too much noise going on, there's social media, you know, and uh, the internet and all attendant uh, things. So the, what has happened, ironically through all this is that we're actually seeing a revolution a golden age of drama but it isn't on film for the cinema it's on television uh, and, you know particularly through the um, means of the US cable stations and and HBO and so forth you've seen amazing work being done which you know if I, it's a few years ago now but a, a, a show like The Wire I would say is definitely up there as one of the greatest films ever made. You know, the storytelling is extraordinary in that. So um, I think drama's fine. There's a great need for drama. It's just our means, like the single film, the single drama uh, practitioner, which I am, uh, is under threat right now. Less so for me personally, much more demanding for younger people coming through, I think. And they've got to look at television. It's the means of delivery of the message that is changing, not necessarily the message itself. And for somebody who is young and is uh, uh, starting uh, the, the producer career, uh, in the past you moved from, you worked in England and then you moved to the US, so you have uh, a wide uh, view of, 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 the, of the market also from a geographic point of view. Uh, do you think it's, it's uh, safer or better uh, to bet on a, on a, on a wider uh, kind of project or something that has to do more with a national market or a, or a regional market? Uh, very good question. I mean, I was able to work between the UK and the US because the UK shares a language with the US and shares a co uh, common cultural uh, elements, which made it pretty easy. And I've always gone to the US for funding for my, my films. So in a sense, I was able to play the international card as well as the national card, making British films, which I have done for the last 20 years, often with American money. Um, so I got the best of both worlds. N starting out now as a young producer, I, th I think you also have to think about the quality of life you want as an individual. You know, do you want to spend your life on a plane, uh, far away from your family and loved ones, and have a good career, or do you want to stay clo close to home and maybe have diminished prospects, but work within a national framework? I would always think you have to reflect your own culture. There's very few examples of filmmakers, more producers, it's true, filmmakers who've managed to try to go beyond their national borders and make truly international films. It's possible, but more, more possible now than it was, perhaps, because the, the flow of information is so much more accelerated in the world. But nevertheless, if you look at... Um, I'm thinking of Matteo Garone, for example, Italian filmmaker. So he makes a wonderful film called Gomorrah, which turned into a wonderful television series called Gomorrah. Very beautiful. I think there were two series made of it. One of my favorites. And that traveled around the world, but it didn't betray its national antecedents at all. It was purely, you know, an Italian piece reflecting Italian culture, but in a way that interested the world internationally. So it's finding those stories that can travel is more important than actually traveling, I think.
Thank you very much. One last question about Mia. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a big event in, in, in the market uh, and it's gaining uh, uh, importance in, in time now. Uh, what do you think uh, about this type of events? Uh, how important are they for, for the market, for the industry, and also for the, for the riders in the end? I think these, these kind of markets are very important. It's where people get to meet face to face. So easy to communicate these days via uh, email, phone, FaceTime, whatever it is, but nothing beats actual face to face conversation. So there's always a place. I mean, I mean I've only just arrived, so I can't really tell you much about it, but people will want to come to Rome because Rome's an amazing city. So why not have an important cultural and business event like Mia here? I think it's a, a good thing and can only improve um, Italian um, stature in the world. I think it's, it's a, a good thing and all power to it. But be patient. It takes a while for these things to build up.